Ah, mad skills. Go. Go. Hey, it's back in a lesson. So I'm going to go share screen. Let's get rid of my face. Don't have my face today. Right. Switch to tablet mode. Let's crack on. Wee! See how they did that? Let, let's crack on. Oh, whatever. Okay. So the first thing we did last lesson is we were doing some naming. We we're doing some nomenclature. Yeah. We were doing naming of some organic molecules. And you guys have all been practicing them, of course. Did you just swear, Harry? Is that what you just thought? Somebody, I heard something. I swear, I heard it. It was Josh. I heard you, Josh. Louis, there you for me. Now, guys, now, that's what I call outstanding nomenclature. Well done. That is 2-2-dye. Two, two, who methyl is, yeah, or who ethyl is, yeah? If you want to go and visit methyl and ethyl, do that in your own time. It's methyl, yeah? 2-2-dimethyl two, two, propane, 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 love it. Right, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to be slowly doing is slowly adding in more and more levels of difficulty to these things. So I'm going to go for the next one. Harry, can you name, oh, sorry, that was a terrible diagram. Can you please name this one, please? And if you call it an upside down filter funnel, which is what I had one time, I will not be impressed. Can you believe that an upside down filter, like number one, a filter funnel that you couldn't get it sealed up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what, uh, Harry? Two? Two? What carbon are you counting from? But why, why don't you just count from the top? It's a circle. Check you out! Hey, dude, I'm impressed! One methyl cyclopropane! Josh, are you sitting there right now going, how the hell did Harry just do that? Are you thinking about that? Excellent, excellent, great job. Let's go for the next one. You up for this, uh, Josh? I can hear you, Josh. Name me that bad boy. Come on, impress me. Number one, so let's take it. It's a what? Do you think there's there's only three? It's, ah, oh, well done. Longest chain is a beaut. This is a beaut. Hey, see what I did? Beauty? No. <laughs> Thank, thanks, you heard. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. This is a beaut. It's a beauty. So, uh, sorry. So this is a beaut. Uh, and that's because there are four carbons in the longest chain. Next thing is, where's the double bond, please, uh, Josh? What's it between? What carbon numbers? Well done, good man. You've, you've first of all saw through my trap. See, the problem is because you're learning in English to read left to right, in chemistry we realize we can go in either direction. You want to make things as low in numbers as possible, so we're going to make enon number one and two. It's on one and two, and you pick the number, you pick the right number. So which number out of one and two will I now include in my name? The lowest number, which is? One. Would you agree that the double bond is between carbons one and two? Well, we've got two numbers to choose from then. So what we simply do is we choose the lowest number. So in this case, we just choose the number one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what it is. That was a good one. myself a cup of coffee. Vacuum coffee. You guys all think I'm weird? Amazing. So this is a beaut one in. It's a beaut, and we're going to have to put the one in the middle because the number needs to go before what we're numbering, and this is the double bond. We know that E means CC double bonds. Right, so now I need to add in this bit here. How do I add that, please, John? Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Carbonic. Two methyl butane. Good man. Good job. Lovely process there. I liked it. It went well. Aisha, you ready? Just, you know, just for fun and games. Now that's an interesting one, isn't it? I'll be, I'll be very impressed. Talk me through it, Aisha. Talk me through it. What's the longest chain? Well done. It's a, it's a butte. 
It's a beaut. The long run, we're doing this in stages, piece by piece. The butt. <laughs> it's a square butt. I need to stop. Don't have such a dad right now. So it's a butte. What do we also need to put in front of that butte? So by the way, here's your butte. Here's your butte. What do I need to put in front of it? How we did it? It's a cyclo. It's in a circle. This is cyclobutene. So hang on, hang on. But where's the where's where's the e? Because we need now a number. So here's the question for you, Aisha. I'm going to number this now. A. What the what the devil? A. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. Ah! Oh, I knew it was going to do that. I need to change. No, no, smaller razor. Oh, there, there you go. So Aisha. So here's A, B, C, or D. Right, we're going to go for class vote. Hands up if you're going to start at A. Excellent, well done. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Hands up if you're going to start at B. Ooh, I've got a couple of people who are twitching here. I can see people doing this. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just scratching a face. Yeah, I, oh, I love that. I love that method of doing it. Like, um, yeah, I yeah, excellent. That's why I'm trying to walk you through it, Harry. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> um, so we're not going to start at B. B is the wrong answer. What about C? Oh, that is the correct one. We start at C. Now, here's the next one. So, when, oh, by the way, I'm such an idiot. I'm so sorry. Ignore me. Yeah, we're going to start at C. Yeah. Now, the reason why is because we need to start at the double bond. Yeah. And now we need to count around the circle. But the question is, which way do we go? Now, there is a rule. You always count over a double bond. Yeah, because you can't have a double bond between one and four. That's just, that's just silly. Yeah. So it's, we're going to count in this direction. So this is one, two, three, four. So now can you give me the ending, please, Aisha? What's the E in ending? Well done. It is a one in. This is cyclobute one in. It really is a beaut, isn't it? It's a beauty. <laughs> right now, what we do with this bit, Aisha? Oh, we're done. Look at that. It makes it easy once you get to that point, doesn't it? Three methyl cyclobute one in. Do you get it, Harry? Hit me. Okay, no, it's a really good question. So let's start from B then. Switch to red. Let's start here. Let's call this one. Then we have to count over the double. Oh, no, it does make a difference. Because look, if we then we have to count over the double, that's the rule. That becomes two, that becomes three, and that becomes four. This would be four methyl, four methyl, which is a bigger number. And we want to always go for the lowest numbers. Oh, imagine this. Imagine this was a 99, 100 carbon ring. You wouldn't want to count all the way around it, would you? To get 99 methyl. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it makes sense once you start looking at it in massive terms. By the way, just for Louis, just for, you know, fun and games. Louis, so I'm making the, they're making Harry's point here. There we go. Name that for me, please, Louis. Okay, okay. Three methyl cyclo oct one in. Well done, Louis. Can I now have a quick show of hands? Put your hands up if you think you could have done it. Isn't that interesting? Nobody puts that hand up apart from Yehan. That's an interesting one. I like this one. This is a great hand. I like that, Harry. I like that, that one a lot. It's a cool hand, that one. Louis, well done. Really impressed. Um, it's not as hard as it sounds. Let's try another one. Harry, stop. You don't. I don't know why you guys get so worried about name. It's just practice. Name it. Do you want me to step you through it? You were right the first time. Because you can count. You, 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 it was either make that one and that two and count over the double bond that way, or you can make it start here and you're still counting over it. That's okay. 
Yeah, so one methyl was good. Go on. Probe? 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 Thank you. Cyclo. What am I doing? Cyclo pent what? Well done. Dude, you on it. So we try another one? You guys are like, I hate you, Mr. Duncan. I hate you so much. <laughs> let's do another one. Uh, Josh, I know how much you're hating this game. Uh, let's do... Um, oh, I can't give you that. Darn it. <laughs> Look at that. That's cool, right? <laughs> All I have to do. Go on, Josh. <laughs> Don't name the smiley face, though. Die. Uh, 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 careful. If you ever say die, what must be with it? How many numbers would go with a die? Two. Ah, uh, thank you. So, two, two. That's interesting. Because if you were going, so where did you start? Did you start at A, B, or C? You started B, okay, cool. Started here. Right, so that's your number one. Where must Yep. It's in a circle. It's in a circle. Trope. One in. Well done. Not bad. Not bad at all. Really pretty. Guys, it's a work in progress. I'm not expecting you guys to be able to name these after one lesson of it when I'm not even, actually, that's not even like the majority of my lesson. This is just me just adding in bits as we go along. Next. Right. So let's crack on with today. <laughs> right. So, number one, cracking. So, cracking. So, the process. The reaction, brackets, right. Uh, now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this blank, blank, blank. Yeah, the reaction where long hydrocarbon, long hydrocarbon chains are broken into smaller hydrocarbon chains. Seems reasonable. Right, so, Louis, if I break down a compound, and can you guess, by the way, how do we, if in order, if in order to break a compound, you know, what, what as a chemist do we often apply? If I wanted to break you down into gases, what am I gonna to apply to you? Oh, just make it easy. I want to break some. I want to turn a solid into a gas. Heat. Yeah, chemistry. We have we have very little things that we can do with stuff, but one of them is heating. So we can break this down using heat. What's that called, Louis? Well done. Can you add this to your notes, please, in the blanks? This is a type of thermal decomposition. We are going to break down this compound using heat. Okay. Now you learned this at GCSE. This isn't new for you guys. But now there's two of them. So the two types, little subheading. Oh, what's wrong with me today? Oh, the problem is my, my brain is further ahead and my hand's too slow. There are two types of cracking. Number one is called catalytic. Catalytic cracking, catalytic crack. The next one is called thermal. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Thermal cracking, catalytic cracking, and thermal cracking. Okay, so that's now, that's quite interesting that. Louis, no, I've, I've asked you, I'm bullying you already today. I'm bullying you already. I realize that Ange might be coming on the chat, by the way. I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah, I'm glad that everyone agrees with me. So, um, Josh, what do you, can, you, can, you, can you explain what this catalytic's all about? 
Thank you very much. This one includes a capitalist. Josh, now you're going to seriously impress me now, dude. GCSE. First one, it's hot. These, these questions are notoriously tricky at GCSE. The definition of the capitalist. Um, the problem is there are questions that people mix up. You remember this, it's all units. It's the definition of capitalist. Okay. You need you need word speed. Distance over time. You need physics and like everything else. Thank you very much. The rate of reaction, but you're so close. It speeds up the rate. No, it increases the rate of reaction, but. Stop. Let's add it to our notes. Let's put a note to Bene. Doing a bit of rates over here. Yeah? Note to Bene. Got to say it with an Italian accent, even though it's not Italian, it's Latin. Anyway. So, catalyst. What is dot, dot, dot? Yeah? What is? It is a substance. A substance that increases. A substance that increases the rate of reaction, but itself increases rate of reaction itself not used up. Itself not used up. Boom! Yo! Can you just say the main Yeah, that'd be fine if you want to. Yeah, you can say that if you like. Can, can, can. Okay. Just to check that you guys know what this actually means, because let's be fair, lots of people are like, I don't know what that means. I can say the words, but I don't really know what that means. Eh? So I'm going to take A and B, and I'm going to make... So this, by the way, would go... I'll put it underneath it, rather than having that name over there. So A plus B goes to C. C plus D goes to A plus E. E plus F goes to G. Aisha, who was the catalyst? Good question, right? Huh? Josh is like, eh, I can do this. So you don't understand the words. Not in chemistry context. By the way, I bet you do know it. Guess for me. No, it is not a catalyst. Ye heard it. Pass it to It is not D. Harry. It is not B. Louis. It is A. You should bring it up. It is A. Guys, do you not realize it was the only one that appeared twice? Do you know that stood out? Oh, you're right. He's, he's an intermediate. Oh, C, C appears to... Oh, ignore me. That was a complete stupid thing to say. I'm so sorry. A is the catalyst. C is an intermediate and E is an intermediate. The reason why is because A went in here and it was recreated here. Guys, look at the beauty of this. Guys, okay... Here's your next challenge. Everyone find a quick space. No, no. You've written those things in your book, right? Guys, can you please now combine those three equations to give me the overall, please? Off you go. Same thing as redox. Combine the equations. And look what happens. Oh, the magic that is chemistry. The magic. I'm so sorry. I need to stop. I'm getting awfully excited here over there for certain equations. People are just like, what? Oh, but it's so cool, right? Like, yeah. So glad you said that. I'll take pretty cool. I'll take pretty cool. Pretty cool is better than Mr. Duncan. This is awful. What are you talking about? That's Harry. That's right. That's Anch on the chat being like, Mr. Duncan's ignoring me. I don't understand. Love it. Combine the equations. 
to give me the overall. Step one, step two, step three, and put together. Right? So what? It's not him. <laughs> Did everybody get it? Did everyone get it? Oh, oh no! What did you do? Oh, damn it. They cancel. Yeah. If things are opposite sides, you don't. So I'm not to get it. Well done, you star. So we've got the A's cancel. I'll colour code it if you want me to. The A cancels out with that A. The C cancels out with that C. And the E cancels out brown. E cancels with that E. And so they vanish from the equation. Now it's really cool. So E and C are what are called intermediates. They were created, but then destroyed. Whereas the catalyst went in at the beginning. A is the catalyst. Yeah. A was cat. A was a cat. Meow. Yeah, A was a cat. There you go. A was a cat. And A was a cat because it went in, used in step one. Uh, no, I shouldn't put used. In in step one, but then was regenerated. A will never run out because step two recreates it. Hit me. It does, it, gets, it comes out in step two. And it's not put back in, look. We put back in E. We don't add back in A. Only E was taken or fed back in. A's been left, so it's a, it's a byproduct, and it'll just be used in step one again when it reappears. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that whole thing is a reaction. That's a three-step reaction, yes. This is step one. This is all one reaction. Step one, step two, step three. Yes, correct. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Give me the TV reference for accommodation. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, uh, I've been watching Community, actually. I quite like it. The best episode though was when they did paintball. Oh my god, it was so good. It's from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You guys are rubbish. Whatever. Anyway, back over to here. So in catalytic cracking, we have a catalyst, right guys? You need to know it. So can you add this, please? The catalyst for catalytic cracking. Can you remember, Harry? Can you remember, Aisha? I taught you it's a GCSE even though you didn't need it. It begins with a Z. It's not safe. <laughs> it's zeolite. Zeolite. Now, this is actually the one you do in school. We do catalytic cracking in school. The reason being is, can um, Yehun, if I add a catalyst to a reaction, what's it going to mean in terms of the amount of energy I need to put in? It lowers it. Because we need to be able to crack these chains at a reasonable, at a Bunsen burner range, yeah? And this is done at four, the temp for catalytic cracking is 450 degrees Celsius. Uh, by the way, that number comes up a lot. It's worthwhile keeping it. Oh, by the way, actually, I think actually at, at edXL A level, I think they actually quote 600. Can I, just, can I just check on that one, guys? I think it may be 600 for edXL, but I'll check on that one. All right, the next thing is, is, and that's by the way, that's all you need. A zeolite catalyst at 450 degrees Celsius. It's also done, by the way, with, with low pressure. I mean, we do it at atmospheric, yeah? But in industry, I think they do it like two atmospheres or something, but you don't actually need to comment on the pressure at all. The next one, though, is much, much higher. So thermal, we now get rid of the catalyst entirely. So this is now just a flat temp. So the temperature, way, way, way up there, 1,000 Celsius. That is cooking with gas. Yeah, woza. I mean that that's gonna that's gonna charcoal your 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 sausages. 
your burgers are going to be toast bun. Absolutely toast bun. Yeah. I've always wanted to get, like create a furnace that could reach those kind of temperatures and just see how long it'd take me to cook like a hamburger. It'd be like, go, <laughs> done. And it'd be like, <laughs> that, that's how long it would be. It'd be epic. I can actually, I've got this, I could, I could build one. I've never had the time to build a proper furnace. I'd love to do that as a steam project. We'd have to create like, we'd have to have some like heat proof bricks. We'd have, it'd be really cool. And then we could do some really cool things like melting metals. Like that'd be wicked cool, right? I mean, obviously health and safety is out the window, but whatever. So temperature, thousand degrees. And that's kind of basically all you need. Now, all of a sudden, so the question is, oh, here's a question. Um, Louis, which one's cheaper? Cheaper. Yeah. Absolutely the thermal sheet. Oh, so hang on a sec. What did you say? Did you say the thermal? Oh, uh, I said catalyst, by oh. Why would the thermal be cheaper? Just need a furnace. Just find one of those lying on your house, don't you? Thousand. Thousand degrees. I can't even get a thousand degrees in. I've got supersonic. What's going on? <laughs> catalytic is like 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 a like quarter of the price because you, you're lowering because the catalyst. Why does the catalyst not matter about its quality? It could be platinum metal, and I wouldn't care. Why? Because you get it back. You buy it once. It doesn't matter the cost of the catalyst. I mean, they use a crazy expensive catalyst in industry, and they don't care because they're like, I'm gonna buy it once, and then we make more money. It's a winner. So catalytic is way cheaper. Um, thermal is, it's hard to hit a thousand. You're having to use really quite specialized materials and, and specialized fuels. Like it's not easy to get a thousand. I mean, I, 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 I struggle to get 800 on a good Bunsen burner. I can hit, I can, I can melt salt, 802, 801, and, I, and I'm, I'm pushing it. Like Bunsen burner, blue flame, the hottest point, 900. Hitting a thousand though, oh, it's hard that. And as I said, I'd really love to build a furnace so I could do it because you can do some wicked stuff with hot furnaces. The problem is they're crazy dangerous. But we could like melt aluminium and then cast aluminium. I mean, we could like, we could literally like cast Louis in aluminium. How cool would that be? Just have a metallic Louis. It'd be amazing. Go on, Harry, question. Uh, okay, so if you want the real answer for that, so Zeolite does have another name, which is sodium aluminium silicate. So uh, this is N A. A L S I O. We've got to be careful now. I've got to work out the charge. Just to tell you, sodium is Na plus one. Aluminium is Al plus three. Uh, the the silicon is going to be S I. Um, oh, that's tricky. I haven't got enough. So oh, we haven't got enough sodiums. I think I have three sodiums in reality. Na three Al Al S. So that now brings me to a plus six. Um, and the silicon is going to bring a plus four to this. So what's, oh, total is minus eight. So I need, there you go, no, take, I'll take that away. There you go, there you go, that's it. That's one of them. There are many ones, in fact, but that's one of them. Sodium, aluminium, silicate. And if you're wondering how I built it, I never remember these formulae, but I'm, what I'm doing is I remember there being like one of everybody and then a whole load of options to balance out. So I just work out the total plus charges and then just tack on options to cancel it. Have I got enough there? Because that there is bringing plus four, yeah, plus three, plus one, minus, plus eight in total. I need minus eight to cancel it out. And that, yeah, that's correct. Sodium aluminium silicate. Um, NXL, give it a, uh, uh, NXL just tend to call it alumina silicate. Alumina. Not alu aluminium. It's alumina silicate. Really weird, NXL. Um, anyway, so you don't need to know that, though. Just remember zeolite. I mean, Harry, you know it. You don't need to know because basically I don't know. I mean, I do, but I don't. It might even be not exactly the correct formula. Like, I think there was like, I remember seeing, but there, there are different versions of it. Like, there's a whole bunch of different ones. There might have been an NA3 with one of them. I can Google it in a second, but like, but anyway, the point being is, would everyone agree that the catalytic's cheaper? Yeah, we know the catalytic is cheaper. By a long way as well. You're, like, you're talking like a quarter of the price. Well, what that means is, why would you ever do thermal? So first thing, what we now need to do is we now need to put in some facts here and say, hang on a sec. First learning objective, Harry, I'm re I'm, 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 I know I bully you a lot here, Harry. And I bully you because I taught you before. You and I, I bully quite a lot. So the question here is, the exam question is, why, why do we crack? Why do we crack alkanes? 
Now, this question is a really important one because everyone gets it wrong year after year. And it's not their fault. It's part of the textbooks, part of the internet, it's partly teachers. Aisha, can you remember why we cry? Say again. You start. Of what? Of which ones? The, so there's one more mark here you're missing. Of what? I'll, I'll, I'll probably take it. They'll probably allow that. They, I think they, de they, they definitely would take it. Of short chains. Yeah, short chain fuels. The demand exceeds the supply of short chain. I, I, I said chain. Short chain alkanes. Brackets. Petrol. We, we have. God. I heard a hot, a, I heard a terrifying statistic the other day. I heard that there's something like, it's like half a billion cars on the planet now. Something terrifying like that. Like it was a, it was a decent quantity of the total people. Do you know what I mean? It might have even been like a billion cars. I was like, what? Everybody wants a car. Most cars run on petrol. Now, crude oil, we know crude oil is a mixture of liquids, a mixture of fractions. And those fractions are used for each of the different purposes, and petrol is the one we demand the most from. The problem is, when World War II kicked off, there wasn't a big enough, there wasn't a big supply. There were too many vehicles and not enough petrol in the crude. So we cracked. So what we do is we take naphtha. Now, this is the only time you ever get to see naphtha, folks. We take naphtha. Now, naphtha, C, C10, H, uh, by the way, C10, H, double it, naphtha, 22, 2, C, it's about C15, 16, H, 32. Yeah. Right, guys, first thing, this is called the naphtha fraction. Naphtha fraction. So, first question I've got to you, Josh. What do you notice about the fraction in terms of the alkanes it contains? Is it just one alkane? It's not, is it? It contains about five or six different alkanes. Can you tell me what that means? And if I was going to say, to you, what's the boiling point of that? What can you tell me? No, no, it's going to be low, they're short. But what's the point? Could, could I say it's 100 degrees? Could I do that? Why? So, in this fraction, we've got a range of length of chains. So, we've got C10, C11, C12, C13, C14, C15. Yep. Yeah. Which one of those has got the lowest boiling point? Well done. The shortest one has the lowest. Explain why. Three marks. On the Okay, you get the weaker one, yes, you get that one. And therefore? Therefore. Um, you skip the first one. You can not explain it in all the Fs. Shorter chain, therefore smaller molecules, smaller MR, smaller MR, less electrons. The mark really is the same lower MR slash less electrons. Therefore, weaker LDS, therefore less energy needed to break. Three marks, yeah. So the C time is the lowest. So, so what I'm trying to tell you here, guys, is that the fractions themselves are mixtures. So why is it that the tower creates a mixture of these liquids? It's because they've all got very similar boiling points. They're very, so they, the range is quite narrow. Does that make sense? So they all come up at the same point in the tower. Um, Harry, how do I separate these liquids? In that Put them back into the tower. Do another one. So guys, you can fraction and distill a fraction. By the way, you all know this. You guys have been, anyone who's been to the petrol station with their pump in it, with their pants, and they see that there's two pumps. There's the expensive petrol and the cheap petrol. What's that about? Has anyone ever been like, I don't know, it's expensive stuff to that. Yeah? But you shouldn't. It's bad for your car, unless your car is designed to burn it. And what have they done? They've taken the petrol fraction, distilled it again, and removed the longest chain. So they've got more shorter chains. So it burns better. But cars aren't designed to burn. Cars are designed to burn a petrol fraction. Yeah? Unless you have a sports car which is designed to burn that, it's not good for your vehicle. 
But they don't they're not gonna tell you that because they get more money. Yeah? So anyway, we're gonna take this over. Josh, pick someone in that range. Anyone you like. C 13 H what? What would it be? I like it. 28. Right. We're gonna crack it. Notice that nothing else goes in. This is a thermal decomposition. What this means is there is a condition here. The condition is no air, is no air. Because if you have air, what's this gonna do at 450 degrees Celsius? It's gonna, yeah, yeah, it's gonna burn, it's gonna explode. Explodey, explodey. Don't, don't want that to happen. Uh, so we're gonna take this chain and we're gonna crack it. Now we're gonna do catalytic. Yeah, we're gonna have a catalyst 450. Because at this point, everyone should be going, why is anyone doing thermal anymore? Why, why would you do that? Like, it's a waste of time. Like, let's just do catalytic all the time. The products are different. So thermal, it's thermal cracking, and you can make this little addition for me. Thermal cracking. Notice that I underline the E. Uh, and I underline it twice. Why do we do thermal cracking? The reason is, is the output, the products, products that we make from this is a high percentage, high percentage alkenes. What do we use alkenes for, Louis? Did you say, I don't know? What did you just say? Thanks very much. What well, you said for a dreadful moment, Esther's then? No, no one would have been that silly, would they, Aisha? No one would have been that silly. So why do we do catalytic? The reason why catalytic, we get cyclos. We get cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes, car which are car fuels. We get a high percentage cyclos. Now let me show you what this is about. Because, by the way, can I just say, you need to know those little bits and pieces. But now what we're gonna get is, we're gonna let's make petrol, C8H18 plus. Right. Josh, I'm gonna tell you that we get two other products. Can you tell me what products they might be here from this reaction? There are two of them. Can you tell me what they might be? And what's your thought, what's your ideas here? Okay, let's make it easy for you, Josh. Sorry, I'll make, I'll, I'll okay, I'm gonna get one more product. What's another product, Josh? Yeah, I like it, well done. So you just took them away from the big one. So you have that in your head. Now at A level, they're just gonna, they're just gonna annoy you, Josh, by going, now there's two. So what are you doing? Split that up then. The carbons and hydrogens must still add up. So let's go for C2H4 and C3H6. Is that okay with everyone? It's totally fine. The one thing you can't do is you're not gonna make methane. Mental note, when you crack, you don't get C on it, you don't get CH4. What we're getting is, we're getting an alkene here. Look at the picture. Now this is where, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Thanks for picking 13 there, Josh. Well done, that's great. That's, thanks, thanks for that, Josh. Cheers for that. Give me 13, thanks, thanks. <laughs> it's a ridiculous boy, that, does everyone realize it's totally okay for me to draw it like that? These things are bendy, look how long this thing is. It's a monster. It's gonna be wibbling around. By the way, that's a technical term, to wibble. I'm just messing with you, that's just me messing with you. <laughs> it's not really, it's not really a wibble. That's just silly. So anyway, so we've got that chain, we heat it up, and he's just turned it into this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's made petrol and, and look, he's made ethene and propene. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now this is because, so in this case, we go, what type of cracking did we do? We've got loads of alkenes here. 
This was thermal. If we had done this as a catalytic cracking, we probably wouldn't have got that. What we would have got is we would have taken our, our big stupid C13, double it, 26, 28, and we would have got something like this. We would have got uh, something like one, two, three, four, five, and then instead of getting enes, what we're going to get is we're going to get a whole load. Oh, I've got to be careful here because I'm going to run out of carbons here. Uh, we're going to get a whole load of cyclos. I've got to be careful. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you notice, uh, now I probably will get a small amount of ene, but the majority of them are going to be practically that. What this means is they're not alkenes, they're cyclones. We know that the enes can be cyclones. We know that, right? Yeah? Enes can be cyclones. Did you know that, Josh? No, that's the problem. These guys are nodding because I told them a GCSE. So just to show you this, Josh, check this out. Propene. Yeah, you recognize this, yeah? Notice the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens. Well, C3H6, agreed? Well, hang on a minute. We could also make that cyclopropane. It's got the same numbers. It's got the same number, C3H6. These are said to be functional isomers of each other. They are different family, functional group, family group. Chemical properties group, functional isomers. They have different functions. Aisha, what's the ene going to be used for? Polymers. What's this one going to be used for? The fuels. Does that make sense to everybody? So it's quite nice, this. It's really cool, the fact that... Can I just point out those people who, you know, who do genuinely enjoy the chemistry... And they feel like, you know, oh, so I, I could totally go on, maybe do this further. Um, there's actually a, half a dozen, there's, a, there's more now. There's about a dozen different types of cracking. <clears throat> there is, this is by, I'm done with cracking, we're finished. Oh no, I didn't do the diagrams. So I'm very aware that, what time does this lesson finish? Two minutes. Does any of you guys want maths next? Physics, I don't care about physics. Nothing, you're free? Amazing, we're going to do an explosion after this. What are you doing? Free? Explosion? Explosion? Psychology? <laughs> oh, like, that's a subject. Um, <laughs> don't tell my I said that, by the way. I'm genuinely scared of the psychology teachers. Anyway, oh, this is live on YouTube. Oh, no! I said nothing. Oh, my God. No, I forgot I was live on YouTube. Oh, no! Oh, no! Psychology is a real subject. I love it. Yeah! Anyway, so why we crack? Done. Types of cracking? Done. Different products? Done. Dual cracking diagram? No. So at this point, I'm just going to show you the diagram. Uh, you guys will hopefully remember this. I will cracking practical. <laughs> we can do this, by the way. Uh, the, the other class did it with Mr. Ford. They were doing it. So here, here is the picture. You probably remember seeing this um, last year. So we've got a test tube, we have the catalyst, there's our zeolite. We get some, you don't use cotton wool by the way, that'd be bad. You're just gonna introduce all the whole of the stuff. What we're gonna do, we actually use glass wool. That's what we use. Glass wool soaked in oil. It, the, you heat it up, you heat up the catalyst. Why do we need everything to be hot? Because we need activation energy, we're breaking the covalent bonds here guys, and covalent bonds are hard right like, Yeah. So you heat it up, turn it into gas, heat up the catalyst, gas passes over it, cracks over the catalyst, and then you then collect all your gases underwater. So does everyone remember this the, having the problem suck back? Yeah, it's one of those amazing practicals where the water gets, when you stop heating this, it cools down. Like, like my coffee machine, it sucks the water back up the tube, and if the water goes in, the whole thing explodes and everyone dies. Yeah, it's an amazing practical. I've only killed like two people. So it sucks back, so you have to, so what you have to do is it's really counterintuitive. If the water starts getting sucked back, what do you do? Heat it harder. Yeah, you heat it harder, because you heat this harder, the gas expands and it pushes the water out again. Yeah, it's really, but everyone's really scared of it. 
I actually had a student one time who just screamed like a girl and ran away. And I was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh. So anyway, uh, there is a clever trick that you can do, which is to have a little valve on the end of here just to prevent the water, but I don't, we don't have to use it in school. Anyway, that brings us to the end of a lovely cracking lesson. Uh, what? Kefrin? No! Kefrin! Oh, dude, long time no see. Oh, no way, that's awesome. It's good to see you, dude. I hope you've been watching my videos. Anyway, guys, go and have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.